Good morning. I have a guy sitting on a bunch of bananas and a vase. No way, kid. I don't have the tripod here today. I totally forgot it. Hey, <laughs> there you are. Hi, Julia. James. And there's just someone else. Roseanne, good morning. Uh, good morning, Catherine. I forgot the tripod, so I have this lovely vase with pink tulle with bananas on top of that. And uh, you guys are propped on a pile of bananas with an orange behind you. <laughs> right. Hey, doll. Hey. Whatever. Go away, troll. <laughs> and you too. I accidentally blocked someone the other day and I saw their name as it went away and it was someone I knew, but I didn't catch it enough to be able to um, go back and unblock them. So I actually feel really bad about that. I'm like, sorry, I didn't mean to block you. Why do you have uh, food on your head? Here. Avery, come here. I did, but it's like, it, there's over 700 people in there. Because of all the uh, the porn, porn stuff. So, I, uh, oh my, what is up with this? Yeah, there's over 700 in the blocked list. Emma. It's not possible. It's not. It's someone who's been on my scopes like from a long time ago. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm so popular. I'm so popular with the trolls. My goodness. Oh my. Oh my. Okay, so we got pretty decent moods here. Yes, Periscope really needs to give us a approval, yeah, <laughs> an approval option where we can approve followers, like like on uh, Facebook. But we don't have it yet. So let's talk about this. We've got some uh, decent cooperation going on so far this morning. Yes, if you accidentally, uh, if I suddenly disappear. <laughs> Find me on Facebook. Hey, that's a good thing. <laughs> Find me on Facebook. If you suddenly can't see me anymore, <laughs> I promise it's an accident. So, let's talk some big magic here. How are you guys doing with creative processes? I think you're generally a creative bunch anyway. So I don't know that there's like a lot of encouragement there. Oh no, the banana method. Oh god, that was probably pretty loud. Oh no. You gotta not bump the table. I'm gonna blame you. I'm gonna blame the toddler. Hey, baby. Okay. So, uh, we'll see how far we can get over the... Yes. Oh no. They say, oh no, and uh-oh. <laughs> so we ended on the road trip. And when I wrote, read this before, I underlined a lot of it. <laughs> and now, actually, I don't remember. We're going through this book, Big Magic. And we're on page 24. And we're in the section called The Road Trip. And you don't have to run out and buy this book. We're going to read it. I mean, if it's really long, if it's a long, long story, I may summarize, but I'm pretty much reading it word for word. So you don't have to run out and get it. But if you want to, it's an excellent book. And it's Twin Day. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my gosh. we got to figure out something. Wow. Okay. Can I tape the phone? Oh yeah, with my uh, opinions. I, you know, I, I toss in a lot of opinions. Can I, do you guys know, can I put blue painter's tape across my phone? <laughs> yeah. 
Sorry about that. I know that's like really hard. Let me see if I can tape us up here on the cabinet. Uh, I'm sorry that this is your first time here. We're uh, on twin day. It is a little more chaotic. When I'm at home, it's not. But <laughs> Okay, I'm going to tape you. I promise you can watch replays on um, Catch and the ones that have the twins in them. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, you can help us tap through. Now, oh. How did she do that and still see me? I'll see you. Why am I zoomed? Ah. Okay, I'm just going to hold the phone. Hold the phone. I'm just going to hold it here, and I'm going to put the banana. Here's what I had you sitting on. And this actually worked earlier. <laughs> it's not found art day. <laughs> wow. Hey, let's try this. This might work. <gasps> I think we have it. It's kind of a weird angle. <laughs> Now you're sitting on the bananas propped up against the vase with the pink tool. <laughs> okay. See, we are expressing our creativity right now. Right? We don't have a tripod, so we try the bananas. Uh, the bananas on the vase don't work. The tape doesn't work. So we tried the bananas with the base behind. I think that's going to work because it's stable now. So let me get this oil orange peeled. Anyway, when we, uh, what I would really like to say is that when we open up ourselves to letting creativity take the lead and take, we take the, um, take the reins off our creativity, so to speak, that by that, uh, um, naturally puts you in touch with the larger part of life and all that is and the animating principle, the collective unconscious, whatever you want to call it, um, the thing that makes this body move and talk to you and drop phones and um, problem solve. That can be hard for people in the beginning when you're doing a strong creative process like Anything, um, drawing, counseling people. Um. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So you get sometimes this feeling that it's not you creating the stuff. It is you, but you've given yourself access to a greater part. Uh, not even greater. Jeez, wow. The, you can share. Whoa! The tangerine war continues. Um, it feels like something takes over. Um, it feels like something else is doing the making. And if you're not prepared for that or, or if you've never experienced that, it can be scary. Yeah, it can bring fear. Um, it's really just an additional part of yourself that you haven't let yourself have access to. It's not a ghost or, um, you know, your Aunt Jenny moving in and taking over your body so she can crochet the hat. It's, it's just your soul and your... Here what? Here. If you shove an orange in their face, they hush. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, shove it in their face. Anyway, if you're using this book and starting to create more because you're taking the limits off yourself... Don't be surprised if you feel like a new part of yourself is coming forward. That is what's happening. It's not anything that you have to worry about. It's not being possessed. It's not anything weird. It's just new and unfamiliar. And the more you do it, and actually the more you allow that part of yourself to have access to the world, um, things get super interesting. So it's fun. So now let's try the book after 10 minutes of chaos. So that's your morning chaos. The rest of your day will go orderly and linear and perfectly fine. <laughs>
Here's how I've learned to deal with my fear. I made a decision a long time ago that if I want creativity in my life, and I do, <laughs> guaranteed, then I have to make space for fear, too. We are in the section Courage. She has it sectioned. So we're in section Courage on page 24 called The Road Trip. So... To have creativity, you have to make room for fear, too. Plenty of space for fear also, because fear comes with this road. It comes with it. I decided I would need to build an expansive enough interior life that my fear and my creativity could peacefully coexist. So don't make the mistake of trying to stamp out fear or get rid of it. Banish it to the hinterlands. It doesn't work. And actually, the more you try to banish your fear, the less creativity you'll have access to. Um, yeah, if you shut down anything, you shut down creativity also. It's a, it's a, it's a package deal. Uh, it seems to me that my fear and my creativity are basically conjoined twins, as evidenced by the fact that creativity cannot take a single step forward without fear marching right alongside it. Fear and creativity share a womb. <laughs> they were born at the same time, and they still share some vital organs. This is why we have to be careful at how we handle our fear, because I've noticed, excuse me, one more time, I'm going to turn off the uh, 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 notices things. Okay. <laughs> we have to be careful how we handle our fear because I've noticed that when people try to kill off their fear they end up inadvertently murdering their creativity in the process and I would say also when you try to squash fear you squash love you squash giving you squash energy you can't chop yourself up into bits and put everybody in a nice neat little box it just doesn't work like that it creates so many problems um, you, you're, you're that conduit of energy, and if you pinch it anywhere, you've pinched the whole thing off. So I don't try to kill off my fear. I don't go to war against it. Instead, I make all that space for it. Heaps of space. Every single day, yes, I'm making space for fear right this moment. I allow my fear. I'm making space for fear right this moment. And uh, anxiety. Because... Um, you know, with the phone, the phone falling, and things are a bit more chaotic here, and so I always have a little bit of anxiety on days like this where I know I'm gonna. I mean, it's a challenge too, right? You have to think creatively. You have to think fast to get this message out. This is my daily practice, so it's really important to me that I do it. Whether there's twins here, or whether there's other chaos going on, it's my daily practice. It has to be a priority. So. Even in a tangerine war. I allow my fear to live and breathe and stretch out its legs comfortably. It seems to me that the less I fight my fear, the less it fights back. If I can relax, fear relaxes too. In fact, I cordially invite fear to come along with me everywhere I go. I even have a welcoming speech prepared for fear, which I deliver right before embarking on any new project or adventure. Here's, here's her welcoming speech to fear. And you can do this with anything. Anger, working alongside, yeah, even with flying tangerines. <laughs> even with um, the tangerine war, the great tangerine war of 2016 is what I've been calling it. And it's ongoing. <laughs> okay. I would encourage you to develop something like this for yourself every time you go to sit down to write, every time you go to do something that makes you feel vulnerable. Dearest fear, creativity and I are about to go on a road trip together. I understand you'll be joining us because you always do. I acknowledge that you believe you have an important job to do in my life and that you take your job seriously. Apparently, your job is to induce complete panic whenever I'm about to do anything interesting. And may I say... You are superb at your job. So by all means, keep doing your job if you feel you must. But I will also be doing my job on this road trip, which is to work hard and stay focused. 
That means focusing on the drink order, not singing Disney princess songs. And creativity will be doing its job, which is to remain stimulating and inspiring. There's plenty of room in this vehicle for all of us, so make yourself at home. But understand this. Creativity and I are the only ones who will be making decisions along the way. So you welcome, yeah, you welcome fear and with the clear expectation that the fear is present and yet your creativity will also be expressing itself. There's plenty of room for everybody. Oh, <laughs> I recognize and respect that you are part of this family. And I will never exclude you from your acti our activities, but still your suggestions will not be followed. You're allowed to have a seat and you're allowed to have a voice, but you are not allowed to have a vote. You get a seat, you get a voice, you're welcomed here with love, but the final vote is mine. You're not allowed to touch the roadmaps or suggest detours. You're not allowed to uh, Fiddle with the temperature. Dude, you're not even allowed to touch the radio, so don't even try. But above all else, my dear old familiar friend, you are absolutely forbidden to drive. Then we head off together. Me and creativity and fear, side by side forever. Advancing once more into the terrifying but marvelous terrain of unknown outcome. That's why we don't create if we don't know where it goes. And when you open yourself to the process, there's that sense of uncertainty. There's that sense of energy flowing through you that may feel unfamiliar. And you have no idea where it's going to go. And when you get controlling about it, you shut it down. Uh, when you let fear make decisions, you shut it down. Yeah. So you have to approach it with curiosity. You have to approach it with willingness. You have to approach it not thinking about who's going to see it or what they're going to say or where it's going to go or, God forbid, if it's going to make you money. You just have to create for the sake of creating. The creative process is the point, not the product at the end of it. The feeling of that energy rising up within you, that restlessness that leads you to start looking around find, to find something to do, that's the point giving that energy a place to go and working in that process and that feeling and letting that larger part of yourself have the reins for a while, that is the point. If you create with an end goal in mind, your end goal is going to be distorted. It's not going to be the full expression that it could have been. Any pinching, any distortion that you do is going to leave you with an end product that you're not happy with. No, Sarah. No, no, almost done. Maybe a third. Um, we're talking about walking with fear hand in hand while we create. <laughs> we have to we have to let fear coexist with creation, or we don't create. Uh, if we let our fears about what our product's going to look like, it will. You know, if we let that take control, then we stop creating. So I personally see it as my responsibility to use this life I've been given to create as much as possible. And that has meant going through a lot of fear, going, you know, dealing with Periscope issues that we all have to deal with if we're using it. Oh, cool. Um, dealing with seeing yourself on camera and hearing your own voice and things like that and making mistakes. And um, I was telling uh, Tanya's husband is an artist and the hardest part for me as an artist was putting my drawings on Facebook in their incomplete stages but it really helped me focus on the process and not worrying about where it's going you've got to let that go if you want you don't have to do anything but if you want the fullest most authentic expression of your personal unique energy blend letting go of being results or goal oriented with it is um, critical. Uh, no, since 2011. Okay, this is why it's worth it. This is the next section. 
It isn't always comfortable or easy carrying your fear around with you on your great and ambitious road trip. I mean, but it's always worth it because if you can't learn to travel comfortably alongside your fear, you'll never be able to go anywhere interesting or do anything interesting. And that would be a pity because your life is short and rare and amazing and miraculous and you want to do really interesting things and make really interesting things while you're still here. I know that's what you want for yourself because that's what I want for myself too. It's what we all want. And you have treasures hidden within you, extraordinary treasures, and so do I, and so does everyone around us. And bringing those treasures to light takes work, and faith, focus, courage, and hours of devotion, and the clock is ticking, and the world is spinning, and we simply do not have time anymore <laughs> to think so small. We don't have time. You're ghosting. I we don't have uh we don't have time to be fucking around with this. The world needs your creativity. That's why you're on the planet in a body at this time. You're needed. Your personal uh, oh that's the worst. Periscope is whack. There's lots of problems with Periscope. Ain't nobody got time for that. Don't be messing around. Yes, you are here at this point in time for a reason. With hands that work, with a voice that works, with the ability to create in this world. So um, get to it. <coughs> Find people to help you if you have trouble getting to it. Amen, sister and siesta. Taking lots of siestas is good for creativity. Fear is good for telling stories from the back seat. Right. You can let fear play the alphabet game. Ah, thanks. <laughs> okay, the next section, the section, the next section is an idea arrives. If you miss out on an idea or you let one go flying past, don't worry. Another one will come. Don't feel like you've got to freak out if you realize you've lost an idea. Just wait. The the field of creative ideas is absolutely limitless. You have idea stacks. I loved this idea. <laughs> Mine? It's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> I don't even know. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Uh, with all seriousness, I do appreciate that a lot. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, an idea arrives. <laughs> you can't make me. Now that we're done talking about fear, we can finally talk about magic. Oh, I do. That's my whole goal in life. Let me begin by telling you the most magical thing that's ever happened to me. The most magical thing. It's about a book that I failed to write. My tale begins in the early spring of 2006. I had recently published Eat, Pray, Love. Have you guys read Eat, Pray, Love? At first, I didn't like that book very much, but um, I ended up liking it. And I was trying to figure out what to do with myself next, creatively. My instincts... Ah, no problem, Nina. My instincts told me it was time to return to my literary roots and write a book of fiction, a work of fiction... Something I hadn't done in years. In fact, I hadn't written a novel in so long, I feared I'd forgotten how to do it all. Ah, oh, shit, crap. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Dude, it's like, uh, if I'm sharing it, it, it matters. I don't share no garbage. I feared that fiction had become a language I could no longer speak, but now I had an idea for a novel that excited me tremendously. Thanks for the shares and the, and the hearts and stuff. The idea was based on a story that my sweetheart, Felipe, had told me one night about something that had happened in Brazil when he was growing up there in the 60s. The Brazilian government got a notion to build a giant highway across the Amazon jungle. This was during an era of rampant development and modernization, and such a scheme must have seemed stupendously forward-thinking at the time. They poured a fortune into it, millions and millions and millions of dollars, most of which immediately disappeared into holes of corruption. Eventually, cash trickled into the right places and a highway project began. All was going well for a few months. 
and then it started to rain. It seems that none of the planners had fully grasped the reality of what the rainy season in the Amazon. Yeah, I didn't like it at first. I kind of felt like, well, sure. I mean, if I could go wander Italy at the time, I was like, if I could go wander around the world, yeah, things would be easier. <laughs> at first, that was my first reaction to it. I was like, well, <laughs> maybe. So it starts to rain. They've got this highway going. The construction site was immediately inundated and rendered uninhabitable. The crew had to walk away. There was nothing they could do. Their, their equipment was sinking into water. Uh, that's not, uh, nope. Oh, yeah, just climbing up on the table. So after the rain subsided, the jungle, the jungle had devoured their highway project. The efforts had been erased by nature as if the, the, all that had never existed at all. So you get the picture. When he told me this story, the part about the jungle swallowing up the machines, chills ran up my arms. The hair stood up on the back of my neck, and I felt sick, even a little dizzy. Okay. Do you hear the question at the end of the, the, uh, the rising intonation? <laughs> I have no idea what she's asking. Oh, that. Nope. Here. Here. Come around here. You want this? You gotta, you can't come over the top of the table, even though that is more efficient. Come around here. Get down off the chair and come around here. Okay, hang on. Hang on. Nope, 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 nope. No, Avery. Nope. Not cool. Not gonna happen. No climbing on the table on Gigi's watch, Missy. Ew, I stepped on a tangerine. Yuck. It's so gross. Here, baby. Now you step on the tangerine. What is that? It's multiplication war. Here, baby. Here, baby. Here go. They're over there. Go get them! So you throw them some distance away, then you buy yourself a few seconds. Did you hear her? She went shoo too. <laughs> ah, I like puppies. Trickery. Oh, it didn't work. She's right back. Okay. She gets this idea and she feels it zing through her body. Your body is a great um, receiver of ideas. And that zingy, uh, awesome feeling that you feel is your indicator that it's a really good idea and you should go with this. Antenna, right? That's the word, antenna. The zingy, you get the zingies, you're on to something. So she says she'd experienced this before. She knew immediately what was going on. Such an intense emotional and physiological reaction doesn't strike me often, but it happens enough and is consistent enough with symptoms reported by people all over the world, all throughout history, that I believe I can confidently call it by its name, inspiration. This is what it feels like when an idea comes to you. When an idea comes to you that is full of life and perfectly suited for your unique blend of abilities and stuff, hi Max, um, you get that powerful feeling. That is soul infusing your body and just asking for expression. The most important thing you can do is act on that kind of feeling. Good morning. Um, so how ideas work. I should explain at this point I've spent my entire life in devotion to creativity and along the way I've developed, yeah, birth, right? We've talked about that before. It's, it's something gestating that's a horrible word it's something growing inside of you that needs to be allowed expression the more you can express those kinds of feelings those kinds of inspirations that's what you're here to do and that is what puts you in the flow and then the synchronicities start happening and you follow those and life is meandering and magical and powerful when that happens but you got to act on it you have to move on it. 
incubating and then act. Watch that mouse like a cat and then pounce. You'll know. Okay, when I refer to magic here, I mean it literally. She means literal magic, like in the Hogwarts sense. Best book ever. <laughs> it's the most fun book ever right now. Hogwarts kind of magic. I'm referring to the supernatural, the mystical, inexplicable, inexplicable. Yeah, it's a great book. The surreal, divine, transcendent, otherworldly. Because the truth is, and I believe this too, I believe that creativity is a force of enchantment, not entirely human in its origins. And I would say that also. And I would say the denial of that creative impulse and the denial of that of not of human energy is what creates that hole in our hearts that we spend a lot of time trying to fill with things that will never fill it. I believe that's the heart of addiction. I believe it's the heart of mania. Um, the denial, yes, it causes disease. It, disease, it, disease in our minds first which then um, shows up as disease in our bodies. It's literally destructive to everything about us. Uh, Self-love, letting in this energy that she's talking about, letting this magic move through you. Yes, absolutely. I am aware this is not an especially modern or rational way of seeing things. It's decidedly unscientific. Just the other day, I heard a respected neurologist say in an interview, <clears throat> the creative process may seem magical, but it is not magic. With all due respect, I disagree. I would disagree with that too. I believe the creative process is both magical and magic, because here is what I choose to believe about how creativity functions. I believe that our planet is inhabited not only by animals and planets, bacteria and viruses, but also by ideas. Ideas are a disembodied, energetic life form. They are separate from us, but capable of interacting with us, albeit strangely. Ideas have no material body, but they do have consciousness, and they most certainly have will. Ideas are driven by a single impulse to be made manifest, to move, to find a portal, so to speak. You become the portal for the magic of a creative idea. You are the portal. So her, yeah, so her concept of ideas is that they are, they have a life of their own, they're floating around in the ethers, and they are looking for appropriate portals to come through. I would see that as the God Force, or an animating principle, or all that is, floating around, looking for humans who are willing to allow it to have a place in the world, to allow it to have an expression and an experience of the physical reality that without moving through us isn't possible. That animating principle can't experience the world in that way unless we allow it to come through. And we get to choose. That's where free will comes in. We get to choose. If they don't land in your brain, it's okay. It'll land in a duck brain somewhere. A Terry crash, it's awesome. Don't worry. Somebody's going to get it. Would you like it to be you or the duck down the road? <laughs> Ideas are driven by a single impulse to be made manifest. Okay. The only way they can be made manifest is collaboration with a human partner. It is only through a human's efforts that an idea can be escorted out of the ether and into the realm of the actual. Therefore, ideas spend eternity swirling around us, searching for available and willing human partners. Yeah, if your heart's not open to this process, they just go find somebody who is open to the process. Say hi. Say hi. This is Avery. They're twins, Avery and Ashlyn. This one's Avery. Oh, that's mine. This is yours. This is your pile. That's my pile. Okay. So something to ask yourself is, are you willing? Are you willing to enter into collaboration with Source? Are you willing to be the portal 
for love to be made manifest. If you're willing to, then it involves going through these processes. Getting comfortable with fear. Getting comfortable with rejection. Uh, not that it never stings. I think it always does. It, but you, you don't take it to heart. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't disturb your... Ew! It doesn't disturb your underlying peace, is what I'm saying. Um, it disturbs, but not at a deep level like it does in the beginning, once you move through it and get comfortable with it. Okay. Are you willing to be that portal? That's not in the book. That's me, um, you know, passing on my opinion. I think you should ask yourself that question. And then get ready for the ride of your life. What an, I when an idea thinks it has found somebody, such as you, who might be able to bring it into the world, the idea will... Yeah. Respect, respect your level of readiness. Yeah. If you ask that question and part of you is like, no, I'm not ready. Respect that process. It doesn't require you to sacrifice yourself on the altar for creation. In fact, that'd be a horrible idea. Because what would come through would be um, distorted. Hold on. Oh, I gotta swing you off. So at some point, when they have these squeezy packs and they are full, then they get creative with what's inside of them, and it's not pretty. It's distorted. Can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to let that part go if you can. But that's huge. That's okay. You can take fear with you and say, yeah, it is. It's kind of a big deal. I'm kind of a big deal. Just take it with you. Uh, what? What is with that today? What is with that today? Oh, gross. Here. Oh, my gosh. Two toddlers. Oh, my oh, 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 No. Oh, you've got to get off of that. Nope. No. Here you go. Nope. Can't can't let you do that. Oh, there's oranges everywhere. That's really gross. There's orange goo like all over. Okay. We may be running out of time. Do you hear the, the double chorus of whining started? In fact I should probably just say, hey! Let's, we're probably going to have to wrap up. Uh, Some things uh, are just no. Uh, no climbing on the table. This is Ashlyn. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi, hi baby Ashlyn. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Funny little girls. Hi. Say hi. 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 There they are. There they are. Aren't they funny? That's Ashlyn. Where's Ashlyn? Yeah. Yeah. Say hi. Yeah. That's you. We're sisters. <laughs> what is the? Uh... Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a something. It's double trouble for sure. Unicorns for your face. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you can hear what's happening here. So I'm afraid we'll have a, whoops, we'll have a little bit of a shorter spiel today. That happens a lot, you guys. Uh, on twin days, it's a little bit shorter. Baby toy. Hey, do you see that baby? What's that baby doing? Say hi, baby. Say hi to that baby. So, ooh, that baby's creepy. That's kind of weird. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, ask yourself bye if bye. you're... Bye-bye. Ask yourself if you're ready to let love move through you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ooh, the double wave. She's like, okay. Oh. Are you doing yoga? Uh -huh.
We were doing, uh, I'm in the Fierce Grace Collective, and earlier we were doing the On Nomo, Guru Day Nomo chant thing, and she had her arms up with me, too. Yeah, super sticky. Okay, so it's a wet mop and a change of clothes for babies for this grandma. I will see you guys tomorrow from home where it's a little more peaceful. Thanks for inviting people, and thanks for joining me and dropping by, and appreciate it. And love you and have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. And I'm going to go uh, wrangle babies, be a baby wrangler, twin wrangler. That's my friend Kelly's um, Twitter handle because she has twins. Is twin wrangler. It's hilarious. You're welcome. Have a great day. Tangerine party, throwing, eating, and now the cleaning. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Okay, sounds good. See you later.